Well, it's funny. The script I wrote for this was actually going to be part of my uh, live stream at the end of the month. Kind of, you know, one of those loose end subjects that doesn't get its own video. But I ended up writing so much in the script that I was like, oh no, this, this is its own video. And that's the misunderstanding when it comes to CPU prices coming down. It seems like, and this video is really about two things, right? It's about understanding that you have to accept that CPUs are innovating quickly again and that it just get used to your high-end CPU in a few years not being high-end. I'm used to it, right? I understand that in a year, there may be quad-core Pentiums with hyper-threading. There might be. That's the rumor that Intel is going to have. And that might be $80 and it might be 4.5 gigahertz. And so my 6700K may be the equivalent of the newest Pentium. But that used to be how things worked, right? Before 2010. And that was a good thing. That doesn't mean my 6700K won't game well. It still games great. There's no way it won't. It's overclocked. I like it. I'll probably upgrade, but that means I can upgrade. Don't worry, right? That's number one. And, and number two is just understanding why you want a 16-core processor. So um, I guess first, let's go back, right? That's the second point. The, I want to really... I want to link to a hardware unboxed video where he's comparing... And this is a perfect example. The... Ryzen 1000 1700 versus the Ryzen 2000 uh, 2600. So this was a, I believe it launched the 1700 uh, in 2017 was a $400 CPU guys. And, but for the time that was incredible, right? $400 for um, eight cores that you could overclock to about four gigahertz effectively you're getting a slightly weaker one thousand dollar broadwelly like that's crazy for four hundred dollars and sure enough a year later zen plus came out it solved a lot of latency issues increased clock speeds by a good ten percent and increased ipc yeah like because of the latency tweaks it, it, especially if you use faster ram it increased ipc by a good five ten percent which that, that, that's a huge upgrade compared to what we're used to even then. So that's like a good 15% gaming performance increase, which is what um, Steve at Hardware Unboxed found. You know, it, surprisingly, you know, right now the 1700 is going for around 150, 160 bucks. And so is the 2600, which is crazy that they're the same price. But he found in gaming the 2600, even in like games like Battlefield 5, which typically favors a ton of cores, it 2600 was just ahead by 10 to 20 percent in all games and um, yeah that was a 400 dollar cpu that beat by a one year newer six score and even in productivity tasks you know non-gaming he found that it was only like a five to ten percent difference so even for if you game and do productivity he made the argument honestly the 2600 is better and that's going to happen again right this 2700x is going to it's not even the 2800x amd didn't even bother to release that so keep that in mind but the like 350 dollars at launch 2700x it's going to be beaten by the 3600 that will be 200 or 180 like and that will be an eight core actually too that will crush it probably and there's a chance since this is not a zen plus upgrade this is a full new architecture this is not going to be quite as big as like you know Ryzen 1000 over pile driver, but it's somewhat closer to that than it is Zen 1 to Zen Plus. You know, there the rumor is we're getting $120 ish six core R3s. You know, the R3 3300X will be about $140 maybe. And it's going to be a 4.5 gigahertz six core. And that's going to beat the 2700X at gaming. But that's because we're innovating again. And. You just got to accept that. And if I end up getting a 16 core, right, uh, R9 3850X, blow, I just go all out, right? Pay $500 for it, liquid cool that sucker. I would probably turn off hyper threading and r overclock it as much as I could to try to keep it at like a 5 gigahertz base clock with a beefy all in one cooler. That'd be awesome. But I accept, even though I think it's going to slow down a little bit after that, I just accept that Zen 2 Plus 
will probably be clocked higher, have slightly higher IPC again, use less energy, probably more likely is the biggest upgrade. And the 12 core, uh, what do I want to say, right? The 12 core 4700X, you know, because that would come after this gen that's coming out, will probably beat mine at gaming. And this brings me to point two. This means that budget builds are going to be awesome again. I remember when the Sandy Bridge i3s came out, and seriously, like, I, I know some people laughed at i3s for some reason, but Sandy Bridge had such a huge IPC increase over the previous gen that a good Sandy Bridge i3 could be paired with like a 6970 or a, a GTX 580. Honestly, it could. And unless there was a very specific game, like, there were, they would just max out every game at 100 frames a second. And 120 hertz wasn't even really standard back then. So, you could foreseeably get an i3 Sandy Bridge, which my my cousin did. I built him a PC. Never bottlenecked anything. Still, you know, and, and it was fine. He used it for five years without use playing all of these games just perfectly fine. Uh, actually, he had a 560 Ti Intel last summer, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him one of my mining RX 460s, and he was very happy with the improvement in performance over the 560 Ti. But, you know, that's where we're going to be again, I think, in two years. Um, I think games are going to continue to utilize more and more cores, especially with 8-core 16-thread consoles being the standard next year. And what that, But 6-cores will still be fine for a while, right? I mean, they will be. And by 2021, most games will probably make good use of over eight threads, right? Which means uh, since the consoles have 16 threads, they'll probably, you know, save one core for background tasks. So effectively, they'll be using up to 12 to 14 threads for games, which means if you have a 16 core, it's still good. But I do think things will kind of level off by then. So I, in a few, in a couple of years... You're going to get to the point where, yeah, it might help to have a 16 core, but frankly, 10, 12 cores is more than enough. And that means if you want to build a rig with a $100 right R3, you know, 4300X in 2021 or something, uh, that you'll be able to pair that with a high-end graphics card and not bottleneck it, especially if you're just gaming at 60 frames a second. Like, that's a good thing. And, and that's why you want these 16 cores too, by the way. I know you might not be interested in 12 and 16 cores, but if a 16 core processor is $500, well, what does that mean? It means the 12 core is $400. Oh, we'll keep working down. That means the eight core is probably, there will be eight core models like for 250. Oh, oh, well then that means you're gonna be able to get five gigahertz six cores. Yeah, for dirt cheap guys, dirt cheap. You want a powerful 16 core, because that means even though you don't need that for gaming, that's for non-gaming uses or for streamers or people like me who do video editing. And that means your six and eight core gaming chips are much cheaper than they used to be, right? That's You want that 16 core for $500, because that means AMD will be selling 9,900K equivalents for under 200. You, that's a good thing. That's why you want the core count increase. Because rising tides raise all boats. Your boat may not need 16 cores, but that other boat's going to be a lot cheaper. I don't know if that metaphor made sense, but you get the idea. So, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. I think a lot of people have a misconception about why I'm so excited about 16 cores. And just to make sure you guys don't complain, we were so used to quad cores, like having a... 37 an ivy bridge 3770k for five years and thinking it was basically the strongest thing you can get but those days are over and that's good you want innovation just don't sweat it don't worry your 2700x will still run games at 60 frames per second over the next five years but if you want the best now there's more options all right please like subscribe share this it really helps when you share support me on fate patreon if you have the extra money uh yeah thank you